We have seen the architecture of this Python runtime here, the compiler and virtual machine part, and all there's a byte code, and that gets cached to here. But how should I really believe that this is actually happening up when you really execute Python programs now? Let me illustrate with an example here. Again, I'm not using IDs because IDs hide these details most of the time now. Hence, with command prompt, I'll show this thing stage by stage. So for illustration purpose, I'm creating on directory called Python internals here, where I'll create a bunch of Python files now to show this so-called execution process now. Let's switch to the directory here. So Python internals here. Now, so one of the file I want to create it out here is main.python. I'm using a notepad, just main.python. So that's fine. And inside main.python, what do I do here? So write a simple function called define add of a comma b. So the body I'm writing up return a plus b here, a small b. So this is a simple function Python I'm writing here. I'll invoke this function. I display the result of add of two numbers now. Let's say so 10 comma 20 here. That's all about our simple main dot Python. So how do I execute this program here? We know that from IDE, so directly there's a bunch of UI button will be there, but in command prompt, I just take it up Python. The name of the file is going to be main.python. Then the python.exe, which will take up, uh, which will start the runtime, will take main.python, will does the work we have described on, you know, in the discussion, uh, whatever we have discussed there. So now let's see what the result. We got 30, but the only question here is, so execution is perfect, but where are the so-called uh, the bytecodes created up, are they cached or not? So the, the, the maybe bytecode created out may not be cached, how do we know? So that's the DAR in the current directory, only main.py is available, there's nothing else is available here. That's why we can clearly say that, so the the, the compiled things now, whatever all, they're not cached up. The main.python compiled code is not cached. But I told you for caching, there are two rules are available. One is automatic rule. If I import any other module, caching takes automatically. But if you don't have any imports, direct scripts, you want to really get what they call uh, cached in a way here. You should explicitly do that. A manual compilation is required. Let's see the automatic thing first here. Then we'll look at manual part. So for automatic thing, I'm going to write two more what they call Python files now. One is called test1.python, where inside I write one small function like def, so subtract a and b, two arguments now. The body is simple. I'm just writing written a minus b. There's nothing else I'm doing here. There's one more Python script I'm writing out here, which is test2.python. Now here, within test2.python, what do I do here is write one more function like multiplication of a comma b. So the body part, I just written up a star b. So that's all about two what they call Python files. Let's import them in main here main.python. So I'll open main.python. We'll try to what they call use this modules. Each Python file is a module. Later on, we're going to study in-depth discussion on modules here. But just for understanding this architecture, what we see here is each Python script is a module in a vision. That's where import our first module, which is test1.python. Just give test1. The, the .py module automatically gets imported up. The second one, import test2 here. That's it. Then once test1, test2 are available, we can use anything from those modules now with qualification like a test1 dot subtract here. 10 comma 20 is the first method I'm invoking here. The other one is test2 here dot multiplication of 10 comma 20. So close this out. That's where. So two modules got imported out here and I'm using a function from each of those modules here. Here they're Python scripts now. Let's see. If I really run this main.python, what happens in a wish? Close this out. Now, so I'm going to invoke again here Python, which is our runtime here, and main.python. Now you can see 30 minus 10, 200. The result is perfect here. 10 plus 20 is 30. 10 minus 20 minus 10. 10 star 20 is 200. But is the automatic what they call caching happened for the bytecode files or not? Sure. Let's see the directory here. DIR. You can see there is one so directory call so dunder pi cache with the double underscore double underscore pi cache directory is created up. Let's go inside of that. 
what is there we will explore it out here. now we do dir here there are two files got created up test1 dot c python hyphen 3 dot 7 dot pyc so in my current system here the python version if you just check it out here is a 3 dot 7 here that's why so they are giving c python is our what they call exact runtime we are using it of the standard runtime here the version is 3.7 name of the file dot pyc pyc are nothing but compiled python files now they are bytecode files now here. two modules are imported up two are actually every script they are doing compilation but they are cached now under this directory innovation under uh, you know pycache directory innovation next time these modules whenever i am using it out here surely what uh, you know in current next time i run main.python the the compilation step can be completely skipped off so since the cache files are readily available the bytecode files are readily available that's where performance benefit you can able to see it out so now we got a clarity that caching happens automatically but for main we didn't have got a caching but how do i do caching for our main.python that's where so we are going to use it up what they call you know explicit or a manual compilation now how do i do that that's where I take python minus m the module name is called compile all the directory is called which directory you want to files you have to compile the current directory all the files you want to compile or you just tell the name of the file which is main.python because test one test two already compiled automatically now this main.py so previously was not compiled uh, uh, is compiled sorry it's not cached in a way now i want to really cache this uh, uh, what do you call bytecode of the main.python to how do i do that now compiling and of course caching definitely takes place cd again so go to the pycache directory now here let me show you dir here now you can see three files which are what they call available test one with some what they call runtime and version everything and again main here dot pyc2 so clearly here now next time if you run python what do you call main here dot python so it looks uh, for what they call compiled things which are cached in a way here. they're available directly pick up those files now skip the compilation stage directly do interpretation now definitely performance improvement is there that's what the biggest advantage of this so call the bytecode uh, compilation and the caching definitely there is a benefit so this is what you know we we was talking about here about what you call the compiling and interpretation stages within the runtime architecture and issue the next aspect we want to really talk about here is going to be this compilation all are fine in Avisha, but can I see the code or not? The bytecode uh, what we generated out in Avisha. If you go inside of that CD again underscore underscore pycache, if I display one of the files, let's say main, so you cannot understand this bytecode at all. Sure. But if you want to see bytecode in Avisha, there's a other tool which is called or other module I can say which is called disassembler is available. You can use it up to see the bytecode readable format. It's truly a bytecode, but not readable format. To give convince that how a bytecode look like here. So I just modify this uh, what they call main.python with you know the extra statements now. Just take main.python here. So to see a bytecode of any module here, you can you can see the whole uh, maybe the module of this main.python also is a module. Maybe I can do outside here. First, you are really what do you call import. First, go to what do you call Python. Since I want to run this, uh, what do you call outside? Let me do Python. Go to interpreting mode, so which is like interactive mode here. So once interactive thing, I can do whatever I want. First module I want to import here is disassembler. So this is what import DIS is a short name. Then DIS dot what do you call DIS method is there. Which module you want to really what do you call bytecode you want to see it back that's where I'm giving up the name is going to be main.python let's see what is an output so main.python the file name so just give it up let's see the string is directly python file accepted or not yep now you can see so it is doing up load uh, load name in a way here I think this 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 string is the what you call disassembling not the script so what do I do is simply so since i'm not in what you call converting the whole python script i can modify that notepad so inside of what you call main.python i go inside now i import what they call a module called 
disassembler here. Then I print here uh, das dot disassembly of which function add. So that's it. Let me show you at least add method. What is the bytecode format? Here. Now I run this. What they call Python Python main dot what they call Python innovation. So I can directly type it out here. Python main dot Python. Now you can see the output is same. But at the last part, we are displaying up what we call disassembly code, the bytecode of that specific method. This is how it looks like here. There is a bytecode instructions, load fast, load fast, binary add, return value. They're not machine code instructions, mind you. They are intermediate code, which is specific to the CPython interpreter. And these, these statements are run by the interpreter only. They're not, not again translated into the machine code. Load fast, there is some C code, is a C function. Load fast, there is a C function. Binary add, there is a C function available. So that functions when they execute it out here, then we get a result. So this is completely different from compiled programs now, where this assembly code translated into the machine code, but in uh, interpreted, interpreted uh, executions now, the intermediate code whatever is coming up, they are executed up. Corresponding blocks of code in the interpreter will execute it up, they give the output innovation. That is a fundamental difference, you should grab it up. To give such clarity of intermediate code, how does it look like? I just given this example with DAS module innovation. So that's what we are talking about here. The interpretation will always execute intermediate code directly here. No further translation, no native translation like compiler. Native means platform specific compilation. We don't have that. Unless you have a JIT compiler here. If you have a JIT compiler, they may do some portions of the code which is executed frequently to the native code to get a performance. But when there's no JIT compiler as part of our VM or interpreter, we don't see such kind of a native translation. That's fundamentally how to grab it out. So that's the high level, uh, what they call the architecture of the Python runtime here in action. So we wanted to discuss as part of this session.